Hi guys, Reaper here. Thanks for tuning in. It's certainly been a minute. So I was recently on YouTube looking through uh, some content and videos trying to figure out what AI does in the game and I couldn't find too much available. There wasn't that much information just about how to maybe turn it on and, and turn it off and just the, the basics of, of what it does. So in this video I want to give a comprehensive guide of everything that is AI, how to expand a core, which enables you to turn on AI, uh, what materials are, are used, and the whole mechanics involved of when you activate AI, what happens when you're AFK or watching it as, as it might go. So for the purpose of this video, I've gone with the Balgorn. My Balgorn here has the clear sky core. I've got that upgraded to level four, so I've got some okay bonuses and I plan to expand this core because, well, I don't really have any other Balgorn cores available, and this one has good stats for cap use, uh, laser damage, and it has a bonus to EM on the level four. So what materials are we gonna need? The first one is the Tesseract Star Core. Now, these can be obtained from the boxes in the uh, NES store via the Exchange Store, and you can get those for free or you can expand and get them faster using the paid method. Then you've got the Amethyus cores, which are used to fuel the AI engine itself. So which materials do we actually need uh, to be able to do this and expand your core? You need 120 of the Tesseract core, star cores, which is a material gained from these keys, these keys in the exchange store, you can unlock the Concord points, which enable you to open one of these boxes. In these boxes, the the kind of best prize is, I would say, the Thermo Storm 2 core, which is the best core for damage in the game. And right down here at the very bottom of the list, um, you can see there's a hell of a lot of cores because it shows every single core. But down here, if you use this box, you can unlock uh, up to 10 of these for 1,000 concord points which is pretty good I've, I've done that a few times but you also unlock the um the general data bank fours and the computer chip fours which you need to further expand the advanced set of attributes once you've expanded the core so expanding a core essentially you are opening up a complete second set of attributes and the base and primary attribute you are able to unlock a second one from the choice of three so on the balgorn i'm going to click on the intelligent expansion core like so it says it's going to send the core to your inventory don't panic that's absolutely normal and fine click ok then it says that you've been disassembled successfully then you pick between your two base attributes so here i've got 22.5 percent armor and 21 percent inertia for what I'm going to use this AI for, for ratting, AFK, I'm going to go for inertia because I've already got enough tank for the easier type advanced missions I'll be running. So I've selected that. I've spent my 120 Tesseract cores to unlock it. It's now changed from a purple core to a golden core. And I now look like I have some kind of gold ornament as a ship, but... Fear not, you can if you've got one of the materials required. And from all the events, all the different passes, most people should have a few of them at least. You can actually change the appearance of your Balgorn at the particular island station I'm at at the moment. I don't have it, so I'm just going to give you a quick uh, quick idea of, of what you can do to change it. And, and yeah, you can change it all. So I'm going with some yellows and blacks, which is the kind of theme of uh, my corp and you can throw in some other colors as well however i won't be able to save this because i i don't have one of the refactoring doohickeys that are required for it to actually save so we're going to confirm select on this we're going to get some speech come up we've now we, we can now see that on the left side there we've got a icon tap here to unlock ai um, as well as noticing that all your other cores are purple and this one's golden. So I'm going to expand the AI now. I'm going to click on this icon and there's two methods to do this, two ways to two ways to get it. You need to have either 500 Aurum or 200 extra Tesseract cores. 
200 Tesseract cores plus the 120 required to expand the core in the first place is quite a lot and some people may have to save uh, the free to play way for a, a long time to do so but it's all definitely achievable so i'm going to select 500 ore to unlock this it now shows there's zero hours of fuel available so what i want to do is tap on that and i want to put some Amethyst cores in i've got 127 you get a hundred of them when you expand the core so that's 100 hours, which is really good. I'm going to put 16 hours in, which is two days worth to begin with. Next thing you need to do is click on that settings cog in the bottom right hand corner. It's very important you get your settings right because this is how you could lose your ship. So you only want to do high second counters. You want to do a maximum of zero jumps. And the bottom one is to set your warping distance. So I'm using a close range ship. The reason why I've gone with zero jumps is because if you do this in a high sec island, you're spawning the maximum amount of missions with the least amount of travel or keeping your travel uh, jumping gate to gate to zero. So you are able to do eight hours of AI running per day and you're also limited in your encounter missions by 40 missions without Omega and 50 missions uh, per, per day with Omega. So yeah, in the advanced or secondary group of attributes the only way you can actually get attributes to pick from is to effectively grab an existing core from the same ship in my case it would be a different Balgorn core and I would select it and I would ex expand it into this core so it, it absorbs that core makes it disappear but it unlocks attributes that I can select from on this existing clear sky nano core and the more cause you effectively recycle into it the more different attributes you can choose from and again those t4 uh, mats the computer chips and data banks are very expensive on the market which is why if you've got any um, concord pass points available use it to get those keys to unlock the boxes because you can get a lot of mats from it that way i'm close to unlocking my second attribute for free without having to, to buy any on the market so i've gone with the balgorn because the Balgorn is well known to be a cap-stable ship with three large NOS that do silly amounts. Mine are doing about 500 NOS each, uh, 500 energy transfer per NOS, which means I can keep my cap between 80 and 100% and run my tank at all times. That's important because I'm using the pulse implant, not the focus implant. And in this, you can select a passive level 15 bonus. However, they're never really going to be used, so they're not so important. For the general units, I've gone with a um, both efficiency and uh, optimization and of overheating of the heat sinks, because the heat sinks more often uh, off than on, so it boosts the base damage and it still gives me a, a damage bonus when it's hot. I've got an energy NOS for R2 uh, output bonus, and I've got an output bonus for the armor repairers. So I can run everything, as I said, cap stable on this. I've got decent DPS, and when I undock, I can activate the pulse implant. That is then always running until I until AI turns itself off, perhaps eight hours later, or if anything else happens, like a server update. And yeah, it, it, it's it's the best way to get damage. I can't see that using a striker at 100 kilometers would be viable because. As I undock now and activate the AI, the AI has this little logo, which you can see on the bottom right. And it starts by saying that there's zero hours, but that's because I haven't actually clicked on it for the first time. When I click on that, you're gonna see that it will jump from 0.0, .0 hours to eight hours. And then, and so you can see here with my uh, pulse implant running, I am running, uh, almostly virtually sustainable 5000 dps now as my cap drops slightly down to maybe 90 or 80 percent it could go down to 4800 something like that and um but i'm able to run all my modules cap stable decent tank i've activated the ai the ai hours have now jumped up to eight and all that's all that you see happening now on screen is being done by AI itself, the robot. Um, look at the bottom right hand side of the screen, you can see 7.9 hours. So that will count down in one 24 hour period 
once it gets down to zero that's it it's done you have to wait for the next reset and then it will refresh with another eight so best way to see it is could be that um, at work it's safe to do so and your, your phone can be just plugged in on charge leave it to run for eight hours or when you go to bed you know set it to go on you wake up look at your phone again and there's bundles of isk that you've made for doing absolutely no uh, uh, work thanks to the ai itself so on the mechanics of it i've just uh or i've just sorry ai has just warped me into this um news mission in encounters and this is a advanced mission so it's a tech level 10 um fairly straightforward and easy two reps means i'll, I'll be keeping my armor high at all times what happens is when you land, you, you you will not start to shoot until you've locked every single target. So if there's an interceptor, you have to wait until you've locked all targets, including the interceptor, then you will start to shoot. Next mechanic that I find could do with a bit of improvement is when I was using my Mega Navy or Mega Striker, I had, th I had three or four um, damage mods in the lows. As soon as you land, whilst you're locking, it just goes crazy and starts to activate every hot usable module instantly. So before I've even locked and started shooting, I've effectively used all my damage mods. So that's not great. And also it's the same for uh, tracking computers and the AI calculates your optimal orbit range based on multiple factors, which is your um, optimal range plus fall off. And it takes a, an average of some kind of thing from that. Also your NOS range and your webs and it th and, and in, in my case it's automatically assuming that I should orbit at 15 kilometers um, doesn't bother me and that's why as well I haven't got a prop mod on because with these lasers I've got tremendous range and I don't need it um, on the mega and the, the mega mega striker and mega navy I did have a prop mod on but what I found is I was moving too fast to hit the frigs they were often outside of web range so I've actually taken off the afterburner from my uh, navy mega which has really good fall off um, up to with with two computers on it and uh, a, a tank and three damage mods. I've, I can hit out to you know 35, 40 kilometers and take out those freaks. Um, so your armor reps and your hardener will go on, but then they also sporadically go off. So what I found is having a single repper and two hardeners wasn't really doing as good a job as having two armor repairs because as you can see the armor repairs have gone off now but on the second page where i've got my hardener that goes off for a short period of time as well so when the hard two hardeners were going off i was taking an influx of damage which meant i was losing a lot of armor um, i've tried shield tank i've tried armor for the balgorn and for the navy mega i found the armor tank to be better better on cap and just just seem to be better overall one of the things i'd say about running ai is a lot of people with lasers will always do apoc strikers warping at 100 and use range to blap everything off grid uh, quite quickly using siege mode on the battleships and the battle cruisers turning off siege mode for the other ships uh, in ai it won't it will never turn on siege mode for you or turn it off so if you turned on siege mode and left siege mode on Chances are you'd come back and you'd have been missing loads of frigs because your ship's automatically trying to orbit targets as well and you'd come back to a pod. Uh, also, if you're not using siege mode and you're using a striker at 100, I would be quite twitchy about you know leaving it fully AFK overnight because although you, you always warp into a mission at 100 kilometers, if you've sent it at 100 kilometers, by the way, my wallet is at 22 million isk. I'm going to delete any market orders so I can leave my phone on overnight and come back and see what the ISK difference is. Um, so yeah, back to the APOC striker. You you just clear off these market orders. Gone, gone, gone. APOC striker, you warp in at 100, always warps in at 100, but then you're trying to orbit every target at whatever orbit distance. Um, so that means you might miss some targets. Frigs could get close, could web you down. You could end up losing your ship because you don't have enough tank and if you do put tank on you'd be better off going with something like this anyway so for lasers being cap hungry and for the pulse implant being the only viable one that works it's for me a no-brainer that the balgorn is 
for AFK work, the only ship I would recommend uh, using f for that exact reason. Um, could be worthwhile trying a Navy ship, but a Navy ship with a, uh, a pulse implant would need, and without having really good NOS, or a bonus to webs and web range, again and, and having five mid slots i just I, yeah, yeah i just wouldn't recommend it i'd stick with the balgon for safe to be safe um what other things are there so other things are that you are accepting all of the missions okay out of the advanced missions in the high sec island the good thing is the laboratories which are really quite difficult and you wouldn't be able to afk are automatically ignored you'll only pick the 2.5 mil missions and the 3 mil missions you will continually uh, pick those until you finished once you've run out of missions in the encounters menu um, one thing that i learned from seeing it happen myself was that I was worried that if I completed those missions too quickly and it couldn't refresh them, it would turn off the AI. But that's not the case because it will. You will sit in space, and if you watch your ship, you will continually refresh and refresh until you get the missions available. Then you'll accept them, and then you'll continue. So here's that exact example. My AI has got no missions available, and I've just refreshed and they're still not available. There's 50 second seconds left on the clock, and so they're not available. So if you were thinking, let's go with a ship that's got way more damage and less tank, there's not really much point because you'll inevitably hit this wall where you're refreshing and waiting. That's why, and, and quite comfortably, I think with my fit, I could probably take off, again, another one of my heat sinks. As you can see here on the market, I'm up to 341 million ISK. I didn't check my phone in the morning because I was real busy. This is on my other phone, and I came back from work and found that I must have been running missions all night because I have 341 million ISK in the wallet. So take off the 22 mil. I started with 320 mil overnight. is not bad at all, and I've still got some missions available, and... That's without the uh, commendations, which double the bounties. So all in all, for obvious reasons, I think AI is really good, worthwhile having. I hope this video has helped you understand the mechanics of it, what happens out in space, how the AI behaves, what to do, what not to do. So just as a disclaimer, when I'm doing this overnight, I'm using 4G. My 4G never drops out. My phone's always powered. So I'm very confident to leave it overnight it may not work for everybody. As always guys, thanks very much for watching.